Hey everybody, it's Chris with LG Squared. I'm back at the High Performance Home in Marietta, Georgia. And this video is about the insulation that we've chosen on the home. And uh, we're gonna talk about why we've chosen it and how we've installed it. So when we're designing and building a home, whether it's high performance or not, insulation is one of the key uh, elements that we consider uh, we have four basic four control layers that we need to design and consider when building okay so we have water which is uh, bulk water like rain and then the next control layer is air air control layer which can carry with it moisture uh, then there's the vapor control layer which is moisture and that's if any moisture inside the house or outside the house wants to go in one direction or the other, we need to be able to allow it to do that so it doesn't stay within those wall assemblies and cause damage to those assemblies. And then we have our thermal control layer, which is the insulation. Uh, it's, it's been, the, the layers are put in that order of importance uh, for a reason, because water is the leading cause of building failure. And so we want to keep the bulk water out and we do that with cladding, overhangs, flashings, all of that stuff on the exterior of the building. That keeps the moisture away from the assembly and then eventually, and, and then out of the house as well. The, the next control layer is the uh, air control. Air can carry with it moisture as it moves through an assembly. So controlling the air is also controlling water or moisture. Uh, the next control layer is vapor control, and vapor is, we want to allow whatever vapor can get into the assembly to move as it, as it wants to, because if we try to, if we stop it and then we, we could end up trapping it, and trapping it could lead to corrosion of materials uh, that it's in contact with. So we want to let the vapor do what it wants to do and not trap it. And then there's the thermal control layer. And the thermal control layer is, of course, to keep, uh, keep the occupants warm. It's to, but it also has a lot of um, purpose in controlling moisture as well. If you don't have any exterior insulation, you could get condensation on the, on the, the, the sheathing surface. And that moisture, that condensation could stay there and cause the sheathing to, uh, to break down and and corrode over time and so the insulation is has its benefit in, in controlling moisture as well the best way to control that moisture is to put insulation to the outside because every single stud in your your in your wall is a thermal bridge okay so it has an r value of say between four and six okay so it doesn't it doesn't have the r value of insulation where three and a half inches of say rock wool is going to be uh, about 15. So when you have R say 15 with your rock wool and then an R6 and then you have penetrations and if you average all of that out you're going to get a much lower R value say from R15 down to R11 most likely R11, R10. But to really control that moisture, that thermal bridging you can put the insulation to the outside of your air and vapor control layers, and then outside of the thermal control layers, your water control layer. And by, by putting it out there, you're protecting your, your, all of the materials of the home, including those, those control layers. So if the insulation is to the outside, not only is it becoming a thermal break for those studs, but it's keeping it within this blanket around the entire structure. So all of your structure and materials inside are protected from uh, expansion, contraction, uh, and if you put enough to the outside, it helps uh, put, uh, keep your, your moisture risk away from the sheathing. So in the case of this house, our moisture risk level, which is where the uh, highest possibility of uh, moisture building up because of the assembly and the orientation of the home, the location, all of that contributes to where the moisture will build up in, in the assembly. And we have a, a hydrothermic analysis that we run 
on all of our projects to make sure that we keep that moisture risk line away from the sheathing. You want to make sure it dries out and that's why you have your vapor control layer, air control layers all in, in on the exterior, all in the right spot and that ther hydrothermic analysis uh, gives us a lot of that information. The insulation, the more you put to the outside, the further that moisture risk line gets away from the sheathing and that's, that's ideal. So in the case of this, uh, of the Marietta uh, high performance home, the one we're here at today, uh, we have uh, four inches of rock wool on the walls and we have seven inches on the roof. We always want more on the roof. That's where a lot of the heat loss happens, uh, especially at nighttime. The nighttime sky is a heat sink. An old mentor of mine taught me that uh, it, it, you think of the cars in a hotel parking lot, the ones that are under the porta cache, you know, in the morning you see that those cars don't have any condensation on the roof and the cars out in the parking lot do. That's because the porta cache roof is the thermal break between the car and the sky, which is a heat sink. So it's sucking all the heat from the earth. And so it's reaching dew point on the roofs of the cars in the parking lot, whereas the cars under the porta cache, the sky isn't pulling the heat from those cars as quickly and it's not reaching the dew point. So having the insulation to the outside is doing the same thing. It's protecting, it's not allowing the heat, the heat transfer through those studs in either direction. Uh, so, so, the, so the insulation is protecting the heat loss in the winter and the heat gain in the summer, okay? That's why we've chosen to put the insulation to the outside. That presents some issues in terms of typical installations. So like when you do um, lap siding like we're doing, there are some details that, that are different than traditional construction because you have to have something to attach to your corner trim, whether it's uh, you know it's cementitious trim or a metal trim or wood trim, you have to have something to attach to on the corner. And the thicker your insulation is, the less you have to attach to. Uh, so behind the four inches of insulation right at the corner is just more insulation. But then if you go four inches in, then that's where you find your sheathing. But you have to be able to attach your four inch wide trim at the corner, or in our case, a very narrow one inch wide flange of the metal reveal trim. And so we gotta have some something here on the corner. But before we get to that, attaching the insulation is probably the biggest question we get. And that is, um, this is this has all been tested in a lab based on the weight of cladding and the assembly and the spacing of studs and spacing of fasteners. Each, uh, each one by four aligned with the stud is attached to that stud with a very long screw. So when you have a four inch wall, you have a three quarter inch furring strip plus the four inches here, that's four and three quarter, and then you got a half inch sheathing. So you need at least a seven inch screw. Uh, so we've used a seven inch screw on the walls and a nine inch screw on the roof. Uh, nine inch screw gets us, you get at least a one inch embedment into the structure. And that's, that's ideal. That's what the testing is based on. We've used this same assembly. We, we increased or decreased our spacing when we used a heavy gauge metal, it was like a 14 gauge metal. Uh, some of that bearing was down at, the, down at the earth, but we also relied on the weight uh, on this, this substrate, the, the furring strips for the weight of that cladding. And so you'll have to increase the number of screws vertically. Uh, at the corners where we have that, where the insulation turns the corner like this, you know, where we have, so this is four inches of insulation here and so behind that, this four inches of insulation is just more insulation. So we don't have anything to attach these to this way. We have to link them together here. But this piece, this horizontal here, is attached with two screws. We got a minimum of two screws so we can hit framing. And then it cantilevers out and that supports our metal, our metal trim. And it can also support your fiber cement trim or wood trim that you've got. So this is, uh, this is our typical corner detail, it's a horizontal and then vertical everywhere else. Now at the bottom of this assembly, 
uh, is a core event. Uh, this core event helps us with our airflow. The airflow in the assembly is how we keep keep this assembly performing well. It helps it helps with the moisture. It helps with the thermal uh, performance of the assembly. It also helps with the drainage. So any moisture that gets back here can drain down this cavity. This is again three quarter inch cavity because this is a one by four. And at the bottom we have this core event. Uh, it's it's corrugated. You can see that it's corrugated. It's got a little little insect screen on the bottom here. It's opened at the top, but any moisture that comes down can just slide right through the core event here. At the top of the wall, we also have more core event, and it has also a bug screen at the top. And so the siding goes from the top of that core event there down to the to this bottom core event here, and then there's a at the top, we have a 3 8 inch gap to allow that the, the air flow up the wall. That's where the air flow is mostly going to happen is from, from the bottom up to the top. We've also treated every single one of these 1x4s with a, a water-based borate solution uh, before we installed it. So that's our termite protection. Then, of course, the insect screen prevents them from climbing, climbing up into this cavity to get to these. So we've got belts and suspenders. So we're on the roof now of the house and up here we've done seven inches of insulation and instead of aligning our our one by four strips with the framing we've actually rotated the the strips 45 degrees and then added a one inch ventilation strip every uh, just cutting the the one by fours with a one inch gap to help promote ventilation and what happens with a with a roof assembly especially a metal roof is having that ventilation helps with the, the durability of that roof gives it a longer life uh, having a gap to the exterior of the insulation also helps with the thermal performance of the insulation uh, it is the gap also would help with uh, keeping moisture out and just really keeping this roof uh, cooler you know, so the air is always flowing from the low point to the high point. Uh, we have a core vent that runs around the perimeter of the, of the roof with the in insect screen facing down. With the seven inches of insulation, we've got a nine inch roofing screw uh, going into the structure below. So even though they're at a 45 degree angle, we're finding, we still find the structure below so we can get at least a one inch embedment of that screw into the framing. These screws are just wood, they can go into wood or metal. They are a roofing screw. And we go through probably about 5,000, maybe 6,000 screws, uh, I think uh, on average. I think this job ended up with about 10,000 screws. But you don't wanna to try to nail this stuff and you really, you really need to make sure that you're getting into the structure at least one inch. Uh, on, on a roof application low, uh, like this, you can go further apart with your furring strips. Like I said, these are 18 inches on center, the screws are, uh, as opposed to the 12 inches on center that we are on the walls. And you just refer to the manufacturer's recommendations. You can look at some of the research reports. I'll provide a link to the research report that, uh, that I've uh, referred to over the years, and that'll help show you uh, what the, the, the allowances are as far as weight and how they tested and, and, and what went into that to, to give you a better idea of what, you're, uh, what decisions you're gonna make when you're designing and building with continuous insulation. Uh, so many things about this, this material that makes sense. Putting it to the outside, no question, makes the most sense. Having all your control layers to the outside of your building shell makes absolute sense. It's the perfect wall. It can be built anywhere in the world. Things do have to be modified for your climate. Colder climates need more insulation. Be very careful about using all exterior insulation and no cavity insulation. Make sure you have enough. Uh, in the colder you get, the thicker it needs to be. Well, that does it for the how and why of continuous rock wool insulation at the High Performance Home in Marietta, Georgia. If I haven't answered something in this video about continuous 
exterior rock wool insulation, feel free to leave a comment below and share, share, share. And please subscribe to our channel. Uh, this is Chris with LG Squared. Thanks for, thanks for checking in.